Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm gonna play another training game. I'm gonna go d4. My opponent is only 2100. I say that and that doesn't mean much, but I wish they were higher rated. Uh, be before I start the game seriously, thanks everybody for advice about my coffee machine. I'm not home at the moment, but when I get home in about 10 days, I will try to apply everything you said and let you know how it worked out. I mean, your comments were absolutely precious and thank you for the tips. Right now I'm drinking Italian mocha, so no coffee machine here. And yeah, this is the best I can get. But mocha is always okay. It's not an espresso, but still. Okay, queen c2, Nimtso with c5, uh, knight a6 is the main move. Uh, taking with the bishop is a tempo loss, but it's playable. It should be slightly better better for white after bishop takes. Uh, yeah, the last game, if you've seen my last game, you'll know that... Uh, wait, queen b6. I'm just trying to remember. I usually play e3 here, and in my last tournament game against Luka Karlušić, I played e3. But I know that knight f3 is the main move, so I'm, so I'm going to play knight f3 here. I'm just slightly worried about queen b6. Uh, or bishop takes, king takes, knight, king, queen b6. But I do have e3, so it should be fine. Uh, <clears throat> what did I want to say? Yeah, in my last training game, I got to play my prep. <clears throat> and unfortunately, uh, it's... It failed miserably. I just blundered the piece. Okay, bishop g5 doesn't work here because of bishop f2, king f2, knight g4 check, winning the bishop. Or sorry, knight e4 check. Uh, although, no, it doesn't work. I have a knight on c3. So bishop g5, bishop f2, king f2, knight e4, knight e4. Everything's defended. So I could play bishop g5. Uh, I could also just play my usual setup with e3, which I think I'm going to do. So e3, d5, takes, takes, uh, bishop d3. I like that. Normally I play with the bishop on b2. So I'm going to do that here. I mean, it's slightly passive to, to leave the bishop inside the pawn chain, but I actually think that this bishop has a great future on b2 and in many lines with bishop g5 there are h6 g5 plans and d5 becomes well harder to meet okay normally i play a3 here to prevent knight b4 so a3 a5 b3 followed by bishop b2 seems fine if a3 d5 b4 bishop e7 takes pawn takes seems fine so i'm gonna play a3 i don't want to allow knight b4 this is playing a3 and e3 in the queen c2 nimtso secures your queen from any knight d4 or knight b4 jumps okay plays d5 straight away i was expecting a5 now let's say b4 Bishop e7 takes, pawn takes. If b4, d4 takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop b2 seems fine. Yeah, I'm playing b4, I don't see why not. If I can expand for free and develop my bishop, I will. I may even consider playing c5. c5 could be interesting. Getting a sort of semi-slav position in reverse. So... If I play c5, my opponent has a very nice mobile center with e5 and d4, so that could be kind of scary. But I do have a pawn majority on the queen side. And I don't take, which means that his bishop on c8 is still bad, but he plays e5 for free. So let's say c5, e5, bishop b2, d4 takes, uh, e takes. Where does the knight go? Knight e4 maybe? Knight e4, there's bishop f5. Knight b5, there's a6. No, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take. So c takes, e takes, bishop b2, d4, e takes, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes. 
g2 is a problem but I do have knight b5 <clears throat> and then maybe queen e4 check that doesn't work okay I'm gonna take I'm gonna take I, I, I think c5 is a nice idea but allowing e5 would be too scary I think my opponent should take with the pawn if they take with the knight then the bishop is still bad they need to play for an IQP position and if they do take with the pawn I may even consider playing knight b5 first that seems interesting because knight b5 allows me to set up a blockade on d4 very easily so e takes knight b5 let's say bishop g4 knight d4 bishop f3 knight f3 d4 interesting my opponent wants to play d4 so do i just develop or do i or do i play knight b5 knight b5 bishop g4 bishop e2 oh that's interesting knight b5 bishop g4 bishop e2 bishop f3 bishop f3 d4 bishop takes c6 bc6 knight d4 wins a pawn but then again i don't want my bishop on e2 yeah i'm sorry if you can hear my laptop it's making noises that's a problem i've been having for years but apparently there's nothing i can do i've cleaned it several times and yeah okay a, a short digression i think i should put those uh, we call it paste in creation basically there's a thing you you put inside to stop overheating i don't know my laptop always overheats when i record and play so maybe that will work okay back to the game knight b5 bishop g4 bishop e2 knight b5 knight e4 oh knight b5 there may be a5 knight b5 a5 yeah that's scary knight b5 a5 okay i think i have to play bishop b2 knight b5 a5 my rook isn't defended and i don't have b5 knight b5 a5 takes yeah i don't like that I need to have the option to play b5 on a5. Bishop b2, d4, e d4, knight d4, knight d4, queen d4. Maybe I have knight b5? Yeah, okay, I'm not I'm not playing knight b5, I'm playing bishop b2. Even though d4 is coming, I don't think I can afford a5 breaking my structure. If knight b5 was played, then a5 just attacks my rook and the pawn is attacked three times and I don't have b5. Even so, if a5, b5, in this case, there is no knight a5 because there's a pawn on a5, so there is no... Yeah, okay, as expected, so I have to take... okay takes now can i somehow gain a tempo on this rook and on the queen with knight b5 knight b5 queen e5 check bishop e2 yeah i don't like that i think i should just play bishop f3 a5 does a5 work here not really uh, bishop e2 or bishop d3 i think bishop d3 is slightly more precise however it does give him the option to go queen e5 check and i don't have bishop f3 and it's going to be hard for him to develop his bishop with b7 hanging so i think bishop e2 is the way to go i didn't want to throw in rook d1 because of queen e5 
and then after castles or if I don't castle th there could be some bishop g4 ideas increasing the pressure on the pinned bishop I need to castle quickly for now I'm not scared about my king given though I don't have a knight on f3 because his bishops seem to be far off and bishop d6 runs into knight b5 The queen cannot get to g2 easily. I don't know. This is, I mean, it's obviously equal, but I feel like this bishop on c8 may be hard to develop, but I need to castle first. I need to castle and then bishop f3 will be an idea definitely I'm down three minutes on the clock that's not good Also, it's still dark outside, so if you cannot see me well, that's because it's still dark outside. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm definitely not taking, so I feel like castling is correct. Castles, bishop takes, queen takes, rook f8, queen f3, attacks the pawn on b7. Seems good. I have to castle. I'm I'm not even gonna consider anything else. Yeah, this is this is probably a good idea. I mean his b7 pawn was weak and if he had allowed Bishop f3, he could have been in trouble along the diagonal. This way, if he trades, he's going to be fine. The only question is, what do I take with on e2? Because if I take with the knight, I'm not covering e4 anymore. Yeah. So I feel like queen takes is better. And then rook f8, queen f3. That's what I was thinking. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> A very equal position. That's the problem with the Nimtso when they play d5, d4 successfully. My opponent, I feel, did everything correctly. Okay, now queen f3. What does my opponent do? Queen f3, b6. Uh, Oh, do I have knight b5 followed by knight c7 now? Knight b5, queen d6 isn't possible, queen b6 is, knight b5, queen b6, bishop d4, knight b5, queen b6, bishop d4, Although he could also play queen h4 and if I play knight c7 then bishop d6 wins a piece because it attacks my queen, it attacks my knight and it attacks h2. But on knight b5, queen h4, I could throw in g3. But then queen h3 followed by knight g4 is scary. Man. Knight b5, queen b6, bishop d4 seems good. Because on queen c6 I have knight a7. Mm. 
knight b5, queen h4. Can I just keep the knight on b5? And play... I don't know what. I really want to make knight b5 work. Knight b5. Queen h4, g3, queen h3. And I don't have knight c7. Ooh, 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 ooh. No. I don't have bishop f6, bishop f6, knight c7, because my rook is hanging. And if I move my queen now, then knight b5 isn't going to be possible because my bishop hangs. Okay, I'm just going to play queen f3. I, I don't want to risk queen h4 losing material. And if my opponent plays something like bishop d6, I still have knight b5. And I can then take twice on f6. That seems reasonable. Queen f3 also still controls these two squares. And I may be able to just go rook d1, rook d7 if my opponent isn't careful. I don't know, but we're going to have a look at knight b5 after the game. I was afraid of knight b5, queen h4, <clears throat> g3, queen h3, followed by knight g4. But maybe that did work. I don't know. There are many, many scary ideas. I cannot take on, on f6 because after bishop f6, my rook on a1 is attacked and my queen on e2 would be attacked. So... This way I'm targeting the only undefended thing in my opponent's position and getting away from bishop discoveries and also preventing queen h4 basically because on queen h4 g3, queen h3, knight g4 I always have queen g2. So now if b6 is played, uh, I can actually consider playing rook fe1 first because I'm threatening rook e7, rook e7, queen a8, winning a full rook, or actually winning a bishop, because I have, I will have given my rook, my exchange away on e7 at that point. I don't know, knight b5, knight c7 was possibly the winning idea. Possibly. Yes, the thing is called thermal paste. What? What is this move? Oh, I see on knight a4 there is... There is queen c2. I didn't even consider this move. This is a good move. I didn't see queen c2. So do I play rook a2 followed by bishop a1? That seems very strange. <laughs> I 
Any queen move like queen e2 would just be a draw. I mean, would just lead to a draw. So I'm not a big fan of that. Rook a2 seems weird. Rook b1 seems passive, but... It gives me an extra tempo. So rook a b1, let's say b6, rook fd1, queen c2. I always have queen d3 at least. Yeah, knight a4 doesn't work and I'm gonna have to speed up. So if rook a2, then b6 or, or even uh, rook c8. So yeah, I'm gonna go rook b1. I don't want to disconnect my rooks. Knight a4, there was queen c2, and I think I'm losing there. Now I have rook fd1, and on queen c2, I can safely move my knight. Also, on rook c8, I can play rook fd1, and on queen c2, my knight is defended. And no, I cannot take rook e7, rook e7, queen d8, because there's rook e8. I don't know, we will see. I'm four minutes down on the clock, I have to speed up. Okay, b6, let's chase that queen away. Finally. I also may have ideas with queen g3 and knight e4. That's very scary. Very scary. So let's say queen c2, queen g3, rook c8, knight e4. Huh. Queen c2, queen g3, rook a c8. Knight e4, how does my opponent defend? Because on knight e4, queen g7 mate. On anything else, I take on f6 and win a piece. That's interesting. So, also knight d5 may work. So the queen moves away, queen g3. Perhaps my opponent has to go queen g5 now to prevent that. Yeah, probably that's necessary. On queen g3, there could be knight h5, though. I didn't consider that. Defending g7 and misplacing the queen. But then I may have queen g4, g6, queen e4. Or sorry, not uh, e4, d4 on the dark squares. But then bishop f6. Oof. Okay, two minutes down on the clock. Okay. Do I go queen g3? Queen g3, knight h5. Queen g4, g6, queen d4, bishop f6. I don't like that. Can I go knight b5 now? Knight b5, rook a c8, knight a7. Knight b5, rook e c8. What do I do there? Maybe queen g3 there. Ooh, maybe. I feel like I'm better here. <clears throat> queen g3, 
Queen g3, Knight h5 is what worries me. Also, Queen g3, Queen g6 could be an option. So, Knight b5. There may even be rook d8, because of rook d1, I have to take with the queen. But what else do I do? Okay, I'm playing knight b5 and I want to go knight d4. I want to go knight b5, d4, f5. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm expecting rook e d8, against which I'm going to play rook e1, forcing the bishop to f8. Or I may even play knight d4 straight away and get my knight to f5. That seems awfully scary for my opponent. A knight on f5 in this structure would mean that knight g7 is always an option. So let's say knight g7, bishop g7, queen f6, or knight g7, uh, sorry, knight g7, king g7, queen f6, or knight g7, bishop g7, bishop f6. Of course, on knight f5, I'm expecting my opponent to play bishop f8, because on bishop d8, I can take, take. Or knight h6, g h6, queen f6 with mating threats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting my knight to f5 with tempo is, is scary. And I mean, c7 has to be defended, doesn't it? So the only question is, on rook e d8, do I play knight d4? Or not. I don't know, we will see. I, I feel like if my knight gets to f5, I'm gonna be winning. Maybe I'm already winning. Queen e4 cannot be played. Knight e4 cannot be played. So how does my opponent defend? I think rook e d8 is the best move. Because rook e d8 threatens to trade everything. Rook e d8, do I play rook e1 or knight d4? Rook e1 doesn't really do anything because my b1 rook is hanging. I cannot take on e7. I think knight d4. Because knight d4 evicts the queen. The queen can only go to a4, c4, uh, c7, and c8. b3 is covered, b5 is covered, c6 is covered, d2 and e2 are covered. Oh yeah, it can also go to g6. I didn't see that. It can also go to e4. Oh. Okay, I'm ahead on the clock. That's good.
Rookie D8 seems strong to me. I have underestimated Queen E4 on Knight D, on knight D4. So let's say Rookie D8, Knight D4, Queen E4, takes Knight takes, Knight F5, Bishop F8 is the only move, or King F8. But King F8 fails to Knight E7, King E7, Bishop G7, where on F6 I have Bishop H6, so Bishop F8 is the only move. Uh, and then what do I do? Oh, then I can take on d8 and take on a7. So rook e d8, knight d4, queen e4, queen e4, knight e4, knight f5, bishop f8, rook d8, rook d8. Oh, my knight is not on b5 anymore. What am I talking about? My knight is on f5. My opponent is now down two minutes. On the clock. He is under a minute now. And this is 15 plus 10. So yeah, okay, plays the best move. Knight d4. I'm going for my plan. Maybe he doesn't play queen e4. I mean, we can hope. Maybe I can even decline the trade with queen e4 and play something like... Oof, nice. Okay, now knight f5 should just be winning. Am I wrong? Also, there's knight c6. Wow. Knight f5, bishop f8, knight takes g7, knight c6, rook d1, Rook d1. Uh, bishop d8 fails to knight e7 check. And I pick up the rook in the corner. Oh, knight c6 is interesting. Picking up the rook in the corner. Knight c6. Rook d1, rook d1. If king f8, I win a piece. If rook somewhere, I win a piece. Is knight c6 just winning? Knight c6? Rook d1, rook d1. How does my opponent save the bishop? Because on bishop d6, I still play knight e7 check. Okay, I'm playing knight c6. This seems even stronger. Unless I'm blundering something, and I don't think I am. Because the rook in the corner is hanging. Ah, but the queen is on my rook. Because my other rook is on d1 now. Unless I can take on a8 with check, this isn't going to be good. So if king f8, my opponent saves the game. Also, if bishop d8. Okay, bishop d8 loses a piece, but... Smart move. Smart move. I did not see this. Okay. Okay, so now let's go into a slightly better endgame if we can. Can we? Oh, I didn't see this. So takes, takes. Bishop f6. Gf6 is forced. I don't have queen f6. Because my rook's hanging. And I don't have rook d8, rook e8, rook e8, queen e8, queen f6 because there's queen e1 mate at the end of the line. Thank <laughs> you. 
I should have gone knight f5. I should have gone knight f5. I should have listened to my instincts. Now I think I have to take. I mean, if I can go into a king and pawn end game, that may be good. Bishop f6, gf6, maybe queen g4, king f8. Okay, I'm playing bishop f6. That's my only chance for an advantage. And then I have to sort out my back rank issues. So I'm gonna go h4. And I need to play quickly. I would like to get this pawn to h6 and checkmate my opponent. His king is slightly less safe in this structure. Let's just continue with my plan. I mean, this gain space, even if I lose the H pawn, it's not a big deal and it could be a huge asset. Okay. Now I feel we're getting somewhere. Because I may have rook d6. Am I blundering anything? I don't think so. Isn't rook e6 the only move? But then I have queen g4. Queen g4 check. Queen g4 check, king f8. I'm going for this because I don't see anything better. Ah, ah, I didn't, I forgot about this draw. <laughs> Damn. Okay, I'm going to try to get away from it. So king, I, I didn't see this. King g3, queen g5, check here. I don't know, I'm still playing on. I, I, I don't think I can lose this king and pawn endgame, so... I'm going to keep playing. I mean, I definitely have a slightly better king, so... Yeah, it's just gonna be a draw. On g4 there's queen h1, but I'm still gonna play it. Now let's keep playing, come on. I know it's a draw, but let's keep playing.
How do I complicate things? I want my pawn on b5 so that my opponent cannot take and so that his extra pawn on the queen side doesn't mean much and then I'm hoping to hide from the checks on g3 and have a slightly better endgame if I don't lose this pawn king and pawn endgames are better for me now for example queen f6 I think my opponent may be losing I need to slowly, slowly bring my pawns up, starting with g5. But first, I need to get my king up. Can I get away with this? Maybe. Maybe not. I really wish to exchange queens. <clears throat> that would give me some hope. But not with my king so far away. So queen f3, queen f3. No, queen f3, king e uh, queen e5. I'm just trying to, to run away from the checks, but I don't see how. Hmm, interesting. Ah, now there's queen g1. Okay, now it is a draw. Yeah, I'm just offering a draw now. Now there's a perpetual check, whatever I do. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. No, let's look at knight f5. Let's look at knight f5. Uh, 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 where are we? Okay, knight b5, rook e d8, knight d4, queen a4, yes. Okay, so I played knight c6. If knight f5, blunder queen e4 was best? What? Aha, uh -huh, for my opponent, sure. Queen e4, I saw queen e4. And now knight f5. And let's say my opponent trades. 
trades and plays bishop f8. Well, I cannot really go knight g7 because my rook is hanging. So maybe this just doesn't work. Although I could go knight h6, g h6, bishop f6. Threatening mate. Oof. This is brutal. Wait, let's let's check this. Let's see what the engine says. Yeah, knight f5. Come on. Wait, let's turn off the variation arrows and then let's see knight c6. Knight c6 is just as good. Where did I mess up? Knight takes, rook takes. Rook e8. Yeah, I should not have taken on e7. It's still good? Wow. h4 was correct. Let's see. Plus 3. Queen g3 check. King. What? Oh my god. What's the difference? I played queen g4, which is a draw. Queen g3 is winning? What's the difference? Wait, what? How is this winning? Plus six? What's the follow-up? Ah, okay. King h6, queen f6, but... Ah, okay. Wow. And then queen g4, it's equal. Because I don't have access to d6. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's just a perpetual. After, after I allowed... Wait. Wait, winning? What? F4? Are you kidding me? Okay, so it keeps checking. How is this plus 1.3? What's the follow-up? Because if I, if I waste a single move, so let's say here I take the pawn, then it's just a draw. I don't believe that this is winning. No perpetual. Apparently this covers the perpetual. King f2. Wow. Okay. I mean, I knew I was better because of the backwards pawn, but... Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to win. But what can you do? You cannot win every game. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.